Hello, it's Moira MacDonald. Um, I'm not doing anything uh, spectacularly new this morning. I'm going to just do a couple of big tags. And I thought uh, I would take the opportunity to discuss another couple of things. Number one, uh, a few folk do tend to ask me what the name of my shop is. So I wrote it out and if you all uh, rush to write that down if you're interested. Um, the problem I think you're up against with Etsy is when you're in probably anywhere other than America your shop name has an enormously long website address and people struggle to remember it. Uh, which is understandable, I think. So, sorry about that, but uh, that's an Etsy issue. Anyway, that's my shop, so hopefully that's that. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is, I've taken this straight from Etsy. Um, it's some images that I have done uh, graphically. Uh, the bills that I then, I, sorry, I literally have taken it from Etsy, so it's got the kind of watermark tightened on top of it. Obviously that doesn't come out when you buy these. Um, it's bills with flower overlay images on them. Uh, obviously all British bills because these are actually, it's ephemera that I have bought physically and then scanned in and digitally altered by adding the flowers to it. Uh, so that's on my Etsy shop at the grand total of, I put it on at a pound, but it charges you VAT over and above that. So I think it comes out at something like 130 or whatever, thereabouts, um, whatever that works out at for anybody else. Um, so that's, that's the boring stuff out the way. Let's get into the stuff we really want to see, which is the, uh, the making of the tag. I'm going to pull my sleeves up as if that's making a difference. Right, I've cut a couple of big bits of card. Size is not overly significant. Uh, in fact, they're not even the same size. It, that wasn't deliberate. In fact, that was that was by accident. Um, so we'll, we'll work on the first one, the smaller of the two. It's roughly three and a half by, uh, let me see, seven, uh, just over seven and a half but under seven and three quarters, seven and one, two, three, four, five, five eighths. There you go. How's that for accuracy? Right. So I'm, I'm basically going to decorate this. Now what I did yesterday in preparation was I cut out some little images and some frames and I attached the images to the frames. And in my infinite wisdom, I don't know what I was thinking when I did, well, I know, I do know what I was thinking. I was having a look at what I've got card-wise that's out in my desk, right? Um, I keep most of my card is kept in a variety of different places, depending on what it is. Um, and I have some colored card in a box. And I don't know if you can see this in my desk. It's in a box, but it's an absolute nightmare to get into because I need to move all the stuff that's lying on the top of it. And there is a lot of stuff lying on the top of it. So I thought, if I've got any card that's out already, I'll just use that. So I did. Now, the problem I have is that the colour of the card was a kind of very insipid, lemony yellow shade. That's it there. Um, and when I looked at what I was likely to combine with it, I didn't have enough a lot and I thought, oh, well, that's not much use. Uh, and I, you know, I, I got quite annoyed at myself because obviously I had battered ahead and stuck the images to the frame and thought, all right, well, now what am I going to do? Because they really just don't go. They're, you know, they're not going to match anything. Um, so I took some Distress Ink, worn lipstick. I don't know, <laughs> don't know if you know this, but there are more colours of Distress Ink than vintage photo. So I took well, a worn lipstick and I went round the frame. Um, it's, it doesn't completely obliterate the colour, but it does make a reasonable attempt to change it. And as such, um, see I've got three of them because I was going to do three, three, three tags, but I've actually only cut two bits of card. Um, it makes them look a bit better than they were and it's probably going to make them uh, look in relation to the paper I'm using a lot better. And that's my washing machine finishing. So at this point I shall stop the video, deal with the washing machine and come right back. So I'm back. Uh, washing machine dealt with. Right, let's get into what we were doing. Um, right, so what 
as I explained, I used the uh, Distress Ink to colour the frames a bit more to something a bit kind of more low key and more in keeping with the wee pictures I'd used. What I want to do is use some paper um, as well as book page for my background of this tag. I've if I, uh, this was in my stash, it's another one of these um, Craft Sensations pads. I showed you the Christmas one that I bought the other day. This I've had this for ages. Um, so again, I think it either came from the range or another shop we've got here called The Works. Um, it was from one of them, but it's still it's made by the same uh, Dutch company. So it's Craft Sensations and there's some... A lot of this is um, got red tones that will match in okay with the the pink on the. See, I really like this this kind of harlequin type thing. I think I'll use some of that. The pink tones on the what do you call it? The photos and the frames. So I'll just show you briefly if I can find my distress tool. Uh, when it comes to distress ink, in the main, apart from the oxides which haven't come out in the small ones, I tend to just buy the smaller uh, containers because, I, to be honest, I didn't know how much I would use them when I bought them and it was the cheaper way of doing it. I have a big vintage photo because, let's face it, everybody uses vintage photo and uses it a lot. So I've put my ink on my wee, this is how I coloured the frame, put my ink in my little uh, ranger style, whatever it's called, I don't know, I don't know what they're called actually. But then I just went over, I've covered my photo itself with the circle that was the inside of this frame before I cut it out. And I'm just going to go over the frame to try and make it pinkish. That'll do. Now I'm going to have to let that one dry uh, for a wee while. So where's the other ones? Oh, there they are. Uh, do this one as well. Just giving this a second coat to, in the hope that it, it tones down the, the lemon. And I mean it will. And the good thing is. When you do the distressing, it uh, it doesn't generally speaking doesn't give you a kind of uniform colour. It does make it look as if um, there is a degree of age to the the item that you're using. That'll do, I think. Now that circle's there to prevent me from colouring her face, which is. Always a possibility. Right, anyway, let's get back to the matter in hand. So we've got our tag. Uh, I'm going to use my matte gel that we talked about the other day. In fact, I should have brought over a brush, but I forgot that again. What am I like with brushes? It's quite a big brush. Uh, it's quite a big brush because that helps speed wise. Right, so. The first thing we're going to do is we need to get a background organised and I'm going to use some book page and just basically stick it down. So, a little bit of matte gel, move that out of the way, try as hard as I can. I don't want to get matte gel all over my table if I can avoid it because it means that I've got a sticky table and if I've got a sticky table the back of my tag's going to be sticky but it's inevitable. Um, the paper is very thin in this book so I can't... I'm not going to get it right to the top now. Uh, I can't rely on uh, getting it deadly accurate, if you know what I mean. Very thin, and if I if I lean too heavily on the brush, there's every possibility that uh, 
I could tear the paper and I don't really want to do that. I can avoid it obviously because if I tear it it's not going to it's going to wrinkle and it'll show up so then you start having to cut down the size of your paper. Still got some music paper here as well so we're going to use that too. Word of warning when you're using old music paper if it's got lyrics on it. Have a wee read at the lyrics first. Uh, found that out. Some of them aren't terribly politically correct, that's all I'll say. So you've uh, always got to be that wee bit careful with that kind of thing. So this is quite random here. And it's overlapping the edge, but we'll trim round everything when we're done to make sure we've got it all down. Right, uh, now I also want to add some of this scrapbooking paper. It's single-sided. think there because I don't want to have them just put a wee bit of paper up the top I don't want to cover it all over so I'm looking for something that'll do now what I can also do here is where did I put it uh, where did I put my distress to oh, uh, I can actually use my worn lipstick to distress that torn edge because that's white and that's really going to stand out on uh, my tag if I leave it white because uh, most the actual paper I'm using or the card I'm using should I say is um, it's a kind of cream colour so what you want to do is not have it screamingly obvious when you, you go to use it. That's Daisy at the window again. Now the other thing I would warn you if you're using Distress Ink for something like this is Distress Ink is a water-based ink and will run as and when it gets wet. So if my glue goes over the other side or say I stuck this down and I decided I wanted to put glue over it to make sure it was sticking okay, that pink will run. So I don't want to do that in this instance. I want to try and keep this. I'm going to use my acetate here to stick it down. And the main reason for that is in case that distress ink is still wet, I don't want it all over my fingers because I don't like it all over my fingers. I don't like it all over my fingers and apart from not liking it all over my fingers it's running the risk of causing a bit of an issue uh, to the rest of the tag. Now another thing I wanted to add, bear with me again while I get it, I should have done this first. A little doily. I have um, a pack of Dovecraft 40 paper lace doilies. Uh, every time I hear the words paper lace you know what I think or what I want to do don't you? Um, belly don't be a hero 
don't be a fool when you're mad. I really like that song. And I know I married a man called Billy, but that's beside the point. Right, I'm going to stick that down the bottom. Now that is white, but that is okay. I don't mind that. Actually, do I want it there or do I want it further up? I think I want it further up. Yeah, I'll take it further up. Right, so now... Oh, this is going to be... This is going to be messy because there's no way I'm doing this without it going through the, the holes in the doily. Oops, but I've just ripped that. That's what I mean about it being... This kind of paper being very soft. And it's oh so easy to cause you issues. There's my wee acetate. Yeah, that's stuck down, that's fine. Oops. Right, I think we need one of Mummy's baby wipes. If you're using baby wipes, always use alcohol-free baby wipes to do stuff because um, I think, especially if you're using them for cleaning stamps, you run the risk when you use the alcohol, ones that have got alcohol in them, of damaging the photopolymer stamps. That's the clear stamps. We've got all the pink bits in my... That's by doing that distressing. Right, that's, that's fine. Let's get that out of the way. Right, so we're doing not too bad. I've got a little bit of washi tape down here that I'm going to use at the bottom. And similar to, um, you know, when I was talking about doing the, oh, sugar plums. Uh, when I was talking about doing the, what did you call it the other day? What was it? the decoupage and I was explaining that you're always better to uh, do the kind of feathered edge by wetting it. You don't have that luxury with washi tape. You can't you can't obviously wet washi tape to, to tear it but a torn edge blends in so much nicer. Where did I put my bits? Sitting in my lap. Uh, it blends in so much nicer. Right, that's going to have to do. In the meantime, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut, if I can find my scissors, I'm going to cut off all the excess stuff that's around the edge. absolutely no way anybody can justify trying to hold on to those little bits to use. Right, so we've got a basic background here. Now what we want to do is add in our main images, if you will. And our main image is basically, uh, where is my little lady? My little lady. And I'm going to, I cut, I die cut, uh, again die cut, and I need to explain this if you're new to crafting. Um, I die cut yesterday uh, some of these wee fancy flourishes. And die cutting is basically, you get, um, you buy metal dies and they uh, enable you to uh, cut little fancy shapes with the help of a £70 weight uh, money machine called a die cutter. I've got a big show, I think it was about 70 quid it cost me, uh, and that was years ago. So, uh, and the funny thing is, I don't think they've actually gone up all that much in price for some reason, but uh, that's fair enough. Right, so we're going to use our little lady. I've got a little flourish which has been cut in cream card. I have some leaves that I die cut. 
and I'm just going to add them round my little lady. And I've also got a couple of wee bits of doily that are lying on my desk, that have been lying on my desk uh, for a day or two. So we want to, nope, that's the right side. We want to add those to our work. I'm going to put, now wait a minute, see before I put my flourish on, because I'm, I'm going to put my flourish in my top corner there, but I'm thinking if I'm going to cut off my edges, I'd be uh, just as well to make into a tag shape before I put the flourish on for fear that if I, I could add the flourish and then have to lose a bit of it I don't really want to do that if I can avoid it so I'll cut off my corners using my trusty tag and then I'll add my flourish now uh, this is very very delicate um, so that in that respect I'm going to use the very fine typed glue for this because it, I know from experience it really is very difficult to get these down without covering yourself in glue um, and getting really annoyed. The good thing is it's a dry clear glue, it's that art glitter glue I'm using. Uh, if you do not have a fine tipped glue. It is possible um, because I've done it before and I've only just recently got this glue but what I would say is it is not the easiest thing in the world and it does involve it does involve you getting uh, glue all over your fingers and hands. Now I should have a wee pair of tweezers somewhere on the desk never found them, them. They're really, they're absolutely covered in glue as well. Right. So I'm going to add that flourish, oops, there, and now that doily is still quite damp, so I don't want you to overdo battering that down. Uh, I'm going to add my lady, but as well as adding my lady, I want to add this little bit doily, I think, under where my lady's going to go. Do I? No, I don't because she's it's sticking her up too much. So I'm going to add my lady and I'm going to add the leaves at the bottom. In fact, I don't think I'll put the leaves together unless I've got. I've got three leaves that are the same, so I'll use them. So, let's stick our lady down. Now I'll use the Liquitex for this, the matte gel medium. And as I've said, I'm going to hold it in my hand to do this. I want to get enough glue on the frame to hold the frame down. But I don't want to overdo it to the point where the glue is spewing through because if it does, it will cause issues with, oh help, the ink. Right, that'll do this. There is some, where did I put my acetate? Where did I put my acetate? Oh, it's on the floor. That's what that is. Fell off my lap. Give me a sec. Can I move my table back so far? Oh, help. Right. 
Now, I don't want to that gel medium will cause issues with the distress ink without doubt but hopefully not enough to you know, make it screaming because yeah, the thing is I, like I said I mean the whole point of it being distressed is that it looks in some respects distressed right that's fine Uh, now, where are my leaves? I think we shall add our leaves down the bottom. I took a little distress ink round the leaves, a very little amount, just on the edges. Um, so I did that in when I first started out, when I, you know, when I cut everything yesterday, thinking that'll do me. But the more I looked at it, the more I thought, especially with the frame, I thought I really want to uh, cover all of that, or not all of it, but I really didn't feel the lemon colour was uh, giving it as good as it could. Where's my glasses here? Where is my wipe? I do wash my acetate by the way when I'm finished. Uh, generally I've got to because I've got it covered in glue. Right, I'm not happy with the fact that, you see that, that's coming up a little bit there. So what we'll try and do is we shall shove that in a little. And press it down. Hi there, it's me again. Although to you I probably don't feel as if I've been away. I have however done an awful lot. Um, camera cut out, which is not unusual. Uh, it was initially that it had done its 30 minutes and then unfortunately it was a case of I had no battery left. So I finished the tag. Whoa! Hold on while I throw it away. I'd finished the tag because quite frankly I couldn't be bothered waiting. Um, so I'll show you what else I've done since you were here. Um, I was at the point when everything cut out in me, I was about to stick my vellum sticker here. So I did. Uh, hopefully you're seeing that okay. Um, I also added some beautiful little butterflies. My, my very lovely friend Cheryl Stark, whose channel I shall link to in this video. Hello Cheryl. Um, had recently sent me some happy mail. You'll have seen she sent me this beautiful wee dingle dangle for my glue um, so that I didn't lose my wee pin and she made that by the way because she makes jewellery stuff and she's really good with beads. Um, she sent me some beautiful other things along with my wee package uh, amongst which was these lovely little kind of I'm not sure what they are they, they feel kind of velamy uh, butterflies so I added a couple of them because they were kind of reddish and I thought they went quite well with that. I did one of those little envelopes that I do and I also used some distress ink to do the inside of the the top of the envelope. Did my little letter as I usually do with some uh, a wee text stamp and I did some wee splatters here to kind of I felt the white of the um, the doily was just that wee bit too stark so I did some wee splatters with some distress ink and I rounded my corners at the bottom and I did a crocodile up the top so that's that tag all made now because the video cut out and I've had all morning to think about things I decided to do something different for the next tag that I was going to do so what I have done so far is I have prepared what is going to be my tag 
and it's a piece of watercolour paper. Um, when it comes to watercolour paper there's two types, there's hot pressed and there's cold pressed. You tend to find it with cold pressed watercolour paper, it has a, a kind of rough texture and a lot of folks seem to really like this. Um, I didn't realise that hot pressed was completely smooth until purely by chance I was in an art shop looking for some cold pressed wa uh, watercolour paper and I came across hot pressed watercolour paper and I thought you know I much prefer that because I was wanting to do stamping on it and I, I'm sorry but I don't like that texture when I'm trying to do stamping, I much prefer a smooth surface because I think you get a better class, or not a better class but I get a better quality should I say of stamping on smooth hot pressed paper. So choice is yours, cold press, bit of a rough texture, hot press, very smooth. Both are the same, they come in varying weights apparently. Um, it just, you, you shop around and it's whatever suits you yourself financially and what kind of work you're trying to do. I'm happy with hot press. This is paper that I think I got from Cass Art in Glasgow. There's a Cass Art's quite a big chain uh, of art shops and it is purely art. It doesn't really do anything craft wise. Uh, so uh, it was the only place I could find to buy the paper. So anyway, what I am going to do with this is I've used frog tape, which I discussed with you the other day when I was uh, doing some masking and stamping. Uh, I've used that to hold down my tag. Now consequently when I do the rest of the work I'm going to do on this, you're probably going to find there's going to be a wee white border around it. And that's fair enough. It probably isn't going to be entirely straight because I don't think I've stuck it down that straight. But I'll deal with that as and when I've finished doing everything else to it. Now I'm going to prepare a background using Distress Ink. I have Tattered Rose in Distress Oxide. Just happens to be Distress Oxide. To be honest, because it, it is the oxide, it gets a more opaque finish. Tattered Rose is a very, very pale pink. Um, so it suits my purpose to use the, the oxide for this as opposed to just Distress Ink. The other colour I'm going to use is Ice Spruce and I'm just going to use the Distressed Ink for that um, because I don't, I'm not overly fussed about that being darker. I'm, I'm fine with, with that being the colour it is. So Tattered Rose, now I know technically again I should change my ink pad because I've been using worn, lips, worn lipstick with this but I do not, personally do not care on this occasion, right? Because it's just going to give me another sort of shade, if you like, of pink. So. Run that over that. And then we start colouring. Now, when you'll, everybody knows, or everybody will have seen somebody doing the edges or something with vintage photo. This is a wee bit different because what we don't want to do is we don't want to be leaving big circles with the shape of this. So we very lightly start going over it. Coming in from the outside of your paper, anywhere in the outside of your paper, just start bringing in your colour and you'll see the colour appear. Um, hopefully you'll see it if you've got a big enough screen. Uh, so this is this is obviously going to be pink in this corner. Come in for the outside again, quite lightly with my hand, because I don't want to leave big, clear, obvious circular splodges with this uh, Ranger Distress Tool. I don't know what the the actual name of the distress tool is. I know it, it, it might actually just be called a distress tool. Now 
you'll probably find when I take the frog tape off there'll be a fairly clear distinct line round about where that is. Now at this point I'm going to stop with that, put my lid on my ink, take off my little distress, whatever it is, get a new one and I'm going to bring in the iced spruce. Iced spruce is a kind of it's a kind of grey, uh, grey greeny shade. It's really nice. I, I think it's quite, uh, quite a. It's it's a, you know, it's no screamingly green and it's no screamingly grey. It's just a nice shade. I do have it in the oxide as well as the distress ink, because if you're going to do stamping, depending on the quality of the. The stamping you're going to be doing, you know, how specific you want it to be. The oxide would be better than the, the actual distress ink. Now you'll see what I'm not really happy with here is I've maybe come in a bit heavy down in this corner and you can see the colour a lot more distinctively than you can anywhere else. So I need to try and build up the rest to, to match that because it's it's not easy to take it away, I know that. I'm using the frog tape by the way, uh, change direction, not that it matters. Uh, I've, I've used the frog tape because it's, it's really quite handy to um, hold it down. That's my phone and bear with me because I think it's my son telling me he's on the train. Oh, I'm intending to get the train at 17.15. Okay. Right, that's that. He's in Edinburgh just now with his girlfriend. Um, right, so here we are. Here we are. And it looks pretty much as if the bottom is quite distinctively iced spruce as opposed to the top being tattered rose. I'm going to blend that up a bit up there. I think that'll do me for the ice spruce. I'm just going to take that off and go back to the tattered rose again. Let's go over where they, they meet so that it's uh, I'm not screaming line if you know what I mean. I think that'll do me actually. Right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to do a wee bit of stamping on this. Uh, so I'm going to take this off because I no longer need it held down. I think you can fairly well see the frame there that's been left and it might not be it might not be completely straight, but that'll do for the time being. Because if need be, we can always go in and trim down the paper. actually taking a bit of that off. Which wasn't my intention. Take my 
same there. Rip my paper slightly there, do you see that? But we can fix that. There's my glue stick. Tiny bit there and press that down. That will do us. We can get away with that, guys. Right. Oh, I need that. It's really quite cold here today. Not overly pleasant at all. Fairly windy. Uh, now, just getting my baby white at the ready. The next thing we're going to do is the stamping. Now, where did I put the stamps? Oh, here we are. I've brought out my trusty mat, uh, mouse mat to sit under this because I'm going to be using photopolymer stamps. So I like to use that as my cushion to get a better clean. Uh, can I clear our stamp? Sorry, I'm just I'm trying to pick stamps. Maybe I should have thought about this a wee bit more before I get started. Eh? Right, so. I've used these stamps before on a few things. Um, they're all kind of Parisian and they're really just primarily text. And what I'm going to do is do some random stamping for my background. Now I don't need to be very heavy handed here. Ideally, I want to make sure I get them the right way up. Firm pressure, but you don't, you're not squashing it into the paper, you don't need to. You just want to make sure that it makes contact and you get your image transferred. Always take your ink to your stamp. And I'm going to do another one of that. Just a sort of second impression if you like. Because I'm trying to make it look like a background. It's, you know, it's, it, it's in itself. Some things will overlap, like when we did the, the actual collage, stamp collage, and works pretty much the same way. Um, you don't need to shy away from things overlapping. It's perfectly okay for things to share the same space when it comes to this. And they don't all need to be straight either. It is only too possible to introduce things at an angle.
Oops. Trying to clean it and I'm actually knocking it off the wee board. There, it is also possible, uh, incidentally, in fact I should have used it, I shouldn't be so blooming lazy. Um, I have a chamois, a chamois leather, and it is excellent for cleaning stamps. And I found that out because a number of companies started selling them. And of course they were sold at inflated prices because they were for stampers and I thought that's absolutely ridiculous because it literally is just the same as a chamois that you would use for cleaning your windows so I guess what I went out and bought <laughs> Right, I've actually got a quite a long stamp here, a long narrow stamp, and I'm going to have to get, see if I can find, I've got a bigger stamp point if I can find it. I don't think I can get it into my drawer for all the other stamp pads I've got. What I might actually do with this is place a few stamps at the same time. I don't think I'm getting away with that one because that one's too big. Just speed up the stamp process a little bit. I might look at that in relation to because what I want to do is obviously make sure it fits in the the section. Now that's going to overlap up there but that's, like I've said to you before, that's perfectly okay. The world doesn't end if your stamps overlap. Um, it's the nature of collage that some things will cover up some other things. And it's perfectly okay. At the end of, bear with me because I'm going to have to stand up to do this. Um, at the end of the day it's it's only paper. And you want to you don't want to have to keep doing things over and over again. But at the same time uh, you, you don't want to waste stuff either. I'll do it. I want to go back to what I was actually going to stamp on it once I've put these back on my little thing.
Now, do you remember the conversation we had about if you had a stamp that was quite small in relation to, or smaller than the stamping pad you were using, what to try and do was balance it up in some way. That's exactly what I'm going to be doing here, only I'm going to use all of them to stamp with. Sorry, I can't get in for my stamp pads have wedged into the drawer. to do now is balance everything up by stamping something in that bottom corner to the my left. I've got the word Paris. I think I'll use that. Right? to do next is put my main image in and I'm thinking I'll use this girl but what I do want to do is go around her with a little bit of vintage photo because it'll help sorry I'm out the camera as well it'll make her stand out a little bit more if she's got a dark edge. Now when you're going round the edge of something to distress it, you do not need to start eating into your actual image, unless it's what you really want to do, but in this particular instance I don't want to do that, I just want to go round her, make sure that the white core of the picture isn't screamingly obvious. It's quite difficult to get into the little nooks and crannies at things like her neck, but that will do, I think. So, lid on the distress ink in the drawer, put the brown one away, and let's get our stuff down. Now, the particular ink I've used for this Versafine is waterproof. So putting her on in top with glue isn't going to affect that. If I had used Distress Ink to stamp with, I would need to be very careful because it would start to pull away the colour of the Distress Ink. Now, I'm not necessarily wanting her right in the centre. I'm okay with her being down a little bit here. That's fine. Cut out these this morning, or yesterday. Uh, And I'm thinking I can add that up there. And I'm going to use, move it out the way to glue this first. I'm going to use the precision tip glue again for this one. Simply because um, if I don't, it's going to be quite difficult to get it stuck down. And I don't want to overdo it because I don't want a ton of the glue showing through. Even though it dries clear, it will move the Distress Ink glue. So I don't want to overdo the amount I use. Of 
going quite easy. And the other thing I'm going to do This is the bit I don't enjoy. Uh, wait till we see if we can find the tweezers again. I'm going to pick the thing up. Now, there are blobs of glue on the leaves, but I don't want them to be too heavy. So, on the back of my hand, I'm going to take some of it off and then gently push it into place. I'm happy with that. Now, just to finish things off. I am going to stamp on top of her just a little bit. Not a great deal, just a wee bit. Don't lose don't lose your mind at this thought. But it makes it look more natural if she is part of things. So I'm going to do this here. I don't want to stamp their face, obviously. Uh, because I don't want to spoil how she looks, how am I doing? Oh gosh, we're going to run out of time here. So just the very last stamp I'm going to do just says carte postale and we're going to run that there I'm going to take that glue off my hand oh. right that's that that is basically it What we shall now do is we'll move those inks out of the way because there's no more inking getting done and there's no more stamping getting done so we can move those out of the way and move the stamps out of the way and we shall have a look at this and what I would like to do now is I am going to go round and take the white off then turn this into a tag shape so uh, let's hope that this Fiskars cutter is good enough to do this I'm going to put this light on, bear with me I can see just a wee bit better. I hope that's not blinding folk. Sugar plums. Not entirely happy with how that worked. In fact, let's take that off. That can be repaired, don't worry. Right, we've got the top to do. The same thing's going to happen up here because I'm right on the borderline with that uh, thing that I did. Right, we need to take that off. Right, wait a minute, I'm going to do the side first. And then I'll show you how we will repair this.
I'm going to take scissors along that bit of the top, having learned my lesson from that side. Just move that cutter out of the way. Now, plan on turning this into a tag. Here is my trusty tag that I use. Oh no, what have I done with my tag? Right, I've obviously put it somewhere else. Which is a bit short sighted of me, but not to worry. Right, so, what shall we do? Let's just go for it. Right. Take that. Take it off. Turn it that way. And in theory, we should have exactly the same angle. We shall get the crocodile out. Okay, we shall punch a hole in the tag. Now, I find it quite distracting when I look at her face. To make sure I get the right bit right in the centre, so what I'll do is I'll do it on the underside and hope okay. that we're okay. And I think we'll go for a kind of rusty brown that's quite similar to our hair colour. set our eyelid and that is that. Put away our crocodile and at this point oops, I to have to put the crocodile in the box right. I like to try and tidy up a wee bit. Um, I think we want to go down the edges distressing wise. Now we had used tattered rose but I don't think tattered rose is um, strong enough for going round the edge. I would quite like at this point to use worn up stick. So I'm going to use the same tool. I know it's terrible, but we'll survive. And let's just run round the edge. Now, there is a tiny wee mark of glue there, so bear with me while I move the camera because I need to get into the drawer where I keep stuff. Bring my camera back. Bear with me because I'm going to stand up. I've got to see that I've got the angle right. Right, I think that's also okay. Right, there's a wee tiny spot where I've torn the tag because of this, uh, the die cut thing that was there. It came off. So I'm going to put a wee pearl on it. Um, but you can't just put one pearl on it, so we'll put a couple on because one would just look silly. But again, remember what I said the other day that odd numbers is the best way forward when it comes to doing little pearls. 
in a minute I've got these do come with the uh, self adhesive on them but they're never that sticky so what we'll do is we'll just put a few randomly on the tag and the ones I'm choosing there are white and there are off white and I'm using the off white in this not that you, I mean it probably to your eye watching on the TV I don't think it will be particularly distinctive I'm going to lose the rag trying to pick these wee fellas up now I've got it stuck to my finger Right, I think that's going to do this. Three. Because it's an odd number, so that's fine by me. Put my glue stick away. Oh, I'm not my glue stick, my glue pin. Do this. And that's us. So there you go, that's your tag. And I think um, if folk are interested in a photo, this tag is a giveaway. Uh, all you got to do, obviously, is comment in this particular video as to what you thought of it. Um, and I'll pick the winner at random in a week's time. This is, uh, what is this? This is Monday. Monday the 10th, so 17th is next Monday, isn't it? Um, I'll just pick someone at random from the comments and uh, you'll win this tag. So thanks very much. I, I know that's been a kind of marathon um, video today because of the hiccups, but uh, hopefully you like what you see and you stick with me, even although it's lasting forever. So thanks very much for your time and I shall see you all again soon-ish. Bye-bye.